Well, P, uh, this is Maggie, as we saw in the introduction. Maggie has a case of separation anxiety. Now, I just got done discussing with her guardian. One of the things that people do is they use human psychology uh, to try to soothe an animal that's in distress. And I think that was the case here. Mm -hmm. So every time that uh, Maggie is fearful of thunderstorms, for example, the guardian will pet and reinforce or, or pet and try to reassure the dog. Unfortunately for dogs, whatever state of mind they're in when we pet them is what we're reinforcing. So in this case, the guardian un unintentionally has right. been probably reinforcing this nervousness because the dog will want to continue receiving attention. So what I like to do is practice something I call petting with a purpose. I consider petting a dog our way of paying the dog. So I want to pay the dog for doing something for me rather than just to pet them to try to console them or soothe them or just because they look pretty. Uh, now, dogs have a sense of pride just like us. So if the dog feels good about itself, it's going to tr continue to g exhibit that or engage in that activity or behavior to try to continue to feel good and especially if it's something that impresses us. So what I do when I want to, um, number one, does she ever nudge you with her nose or scratch you with her paw mm -hmm. when she wants you to pay attention to her? Yes. Okay. So when she does that, basically that's her way of kind of giving you an order. She's cute and she's doing it in a gentle way probably from, seen from her energy, but she's still telling you kind of what to do. If you follow through, you're reinforcing you get to tell the humans what to do and the humans will comply. That means you're in a leadership position. Now for dogs, I am. she is. She is, yeah. And so for dogs, just like us, the more responsibility we have, uh, the more stress we can have in our lives. And for dogs, it's not healthy for dogs to be, think that they're in charge of humans because we don't act like followers. Sit, sit. I'm gonna go over this here in a second. Okay. So, um, and the next time she nudged, there we go. So she's nudging me, sit. Sit, 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 sit. When a dog is proud about what it's done, its nose is parallel to the ground or tilted upward. I want her to feel proud about the things that we want her to do. So when she, when she nudged me, I did not pet her. I asked mm -hmm. her to sit. I had her, asked her to sit more than I would like, but that's okay. We're, we're going to work on that as well. So now, Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Sit. Sit. So I can't pet her unless she complies. There. So let's come over here and put you on the carpet. That'll be easier to sit. Sit. As soon as her butt hits the ground, I reach over and start petting her. And again, I like to scratch under the chin. And I say this command word the same second I start petting. Sit. And that's it. Most of us talk way too much to our dogs. It's great to talk to your dog if you had a bad day and you're like, oh, can you believe that woman cut me off in traffic and they wouldn't take a check or whatever it is. That's fine. But if we're trying to assign a command to an action, we want it the time. Sit. We want to do it as soon as the dog does it. Now, there's two ways to do this. The first way is what I showed you earlier. So she comes over and nudges us. We give her a counter order. Sit. And as soon as she sits, we pet her. Sit. Right now, I'm doing the second one, which is the dog comes over and sits on her own. Mm -hmm. I pet her for sitting. Now, I didn't ask her to sit, but she's still doing something that we like. Yeah. So I want to reinforce it. If we do that, then the more that we do that, the more she will engage in that behavior because that is something now that gets the human's attention. So a lot of people, when they get a puppy, the puppy comes over and jumps up on them and they reach over and they pet the dog. Well, that's telling the puppy the way to ask a human to pet you is to jump up on them and they will do that to all the rest of the dogs for the rest of their life until we change that behavior. So if we pet her with a purpose, then eventually she will, instead of nudging you, she'll come and sit in front of you and look at you and with her chin up. I, with dogs that have, that have separation anxiety, it's a little bit of a lower self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So we want to build up her confidence and self-esteem. So if we just, hey, sitting down in front of the human is impressive to the humans, then she'll start doing it more often. And if she does that more often and you have a pleasant look on your face because dogs can read your facial expression mm -hmm. and you're petting her, then she starts to feel really good about doing that and she'll do it more often. Now, she's already sitting next to you. You can ask her to lay down. So it doesn't always have to be just a sit, but sitting and laying down are kind of more respectful. They're more subordinate positions. They're a little bit more respectful. So this is petting with a purpose. It is probably the easiest thing that you can do that will have the biggest impact on the dog. Now, it's going to take you a little bit of time to adjust because you're probably used to petting her and say, oh, what a good girl, and you pet her and say all these other words. Yeah. But the more words we use, the more confusing it is for the dog. The small, the, if we only use one word consistently, then she understands if I hear sit and I sit down, I get a reward. Okay. All right.